Can you? Got it. Let's see. Am I? Can I? Yeah. Can yep. share screen now? Give me two ticks. Um. Tell me when it's. Yeah. Tell me when it's going. Yeah. Yeah. So the so the context behind this. Um. John and I were catching up. A week or two ago. Um. About the conference next year. Um. And the dates and stuff and potential for topics. And I had dropped into conversation that. Um, I'd been asked by um, one of the directors and one of the companies that I'm doing some work yeah. in now. Um, so I'm working in a people team, a people function of about 150 staff. And one of the directors asked me to do a continuous, like a taster, a continuous improvement taster session for the people in his world, which was about 40-ish. Um, and his world have got a, a really big range of like frontline staff who do like customer service for for colleagues across the business related to HR and people questions like payroll and holidays and things then he's got middle managers he's got um roles like um data and insights leads he's got case management which do a lot of um like the disciplinaries and things like that that might end up going to tribunals um, and he's got facilities management of different layers. So he'd said, could you do, could you run me this continuous improvement teaser for maybe like an hour with 40 people in person at this event? And on, on the outside, I was like, yeah, of course, Tim, I would love to do that for you. And then he walked away and I was like, oh God, this is a nightmare. How am I going to make this work for A, the, a, a big amount of people, B, a group of people where I actually have four, kind of four layers of um, hierarchy, um, which I don't think I've ever had in terms of a taster before. Um, and how do I pitch it at the right level so that all of them are engaged and enjoy themselves? but understand and grasp the key concepts that I wanted to teach them. And it was also worth me saying, this session was like two hours before their Christmas night out. So they were not gonna be interested in doing like heavy Lean Six Sigma data collection and all that stuff. So um, it was a nightmare. I let it simmer for a couple of weeks, pulled it together the week before, um flung everything to it and it was actually the best continuous improvement workshop i have ever run in my life um in terms of change career which is i don't know 10 or 12 12 years cross industries um cross companies so i thought i'd just take you through the pack that i used um and we can have a chat about it afterwards it won't take long um so what what i decided to do is because a, I had a large number of people in one room. They all just wanted a drink because they were ready for their Christmas night out. And I had multiple layers. Um, I didn't want to go super deep into Lean Six Sigma principles. Um, I wanted to keep it, keep it to the principles of continuous improvement um, because this was just a taster and I wanted it to be fun and memorable, um, but for them to take the key lessons away from it. So what I did is I, I got really clear on four key principles across continuous improvement and Lean Six Sigma, and I built some games around them and used the games to reiterate the points. So, um, that, so this was the pack that I had. Um, I covered off purpose of the session, so it's to give them a mini taster of the continuous improvement of continuous improvement in action, share the key principles of CI, um, have some fun in teams of two or three, and spend some time with people outside of the world that they normally sit in within the people team. Um, so the first principle, what I did is for each of the principles, I gave the principle first, and then I had a task afterwards that um emphasized the the um principle in the first place so for all of the continuous improvement that i do regardless of whether it's 
um, a master black belt project, green belt, yellow belt, or like a little dinky, just do it, white belt thing with, you don't need data because you just have to fix something that's dead easy. Um, I always am a massive promoter of cross-functional collaboration. Um, so this was the principle that I gave them. When I run CI programs for other companies, usually I run a, a continuous improvement challenge for six or eight weeks, which is like a yellow belt project with some guided support. And part of that challenge, we usually have five to 10 people who do it, who all come from different teams and they feed into each other's projects. Um, but it also promotes a bit of interdisciplinary learning and a, a wider network. Um, so that was the first principle. The task that I gave them was to get into teams of three, but they had to have somebody in their team who they don't normally work with. So it couldn't be all facilities management people. Uh, it couldn't be all data people. I asked them to mix it up. Um, the second principle, I said I had some games and tasks for them, but before they jumped into trying to make improvements, we had to take um, a look at what the current state was. So these two bits here, that was examples of current state measures that I had from some projects that we done earlier in the people team with some other people. So I kind of chucked in a couple of examples just to show people um, quantifiable measures with numbers and then also more of the qualitative um, feedback that you might take from people in terms of five star ratings or um, give me three words to explain how you feel about this process or this situation. So principle two was measure your current state um, and basically I gave them this task. So in their group of three, one person was an observer um, two of them had to stand back to back and they had to keep their backs pressed together and they had to throw a ping pong ball. One person had the ping pong ball, they had to throw it behind them and the person on the other side had to catch it. And the measure that I asked them to do first time they did it was how many catches can they get in 30 seconds. Um, so I had a row of them all who did it first time, no practice. Um, by this point, they all started, the noise level in the room hit like, it was massive. I have, I'm quite softly spoken and there was 40 of them hoot, hooting and laughing and shouting and all this stuff. I ended up, the only way I could get them back under control quickly was to wolf, wolf whistle every time I needed their attention. Um, so we had them do this. Um, and then marked down what their score was. They absorbed their uh, the observer in the group did the um, the scoring, and then I gave them five minutes to try and work on improving their performance. So I had the timer on the wall, um, just set the timer off um, and let it run so they could see the countdown. Um, and I basically was like, just do what you want to improve it, see how you feel. Um, gave them five minutes, wolf whistled, got them all back in a row. I've got some pictures I can show you afterwards. Got them all back in a row um, and had them all do it at the same time. And um, again, 30 seconds, they read it again. I asked them to get their observer to recount. Um, and then, so that was our third principles, remeasure once you've made your improvements. And this was the same pieces of work. Um, again, I went back and tied it into some actual improvement projects that we had. Um, and then rerun, that was the 30 seconds. Bonus question. Oh, so I, I chucked in a couple of bonus questions. So this one, um, I the bonus question was, I've asked you to measure one thing, which is how many times but what other measures could you use as part of this process? Um, so we had a group conversation, some people chucked some measures out, um, potential measures that we could use in the future if we wanted to monitor how this was, if it was an actual process in real life. 
Um, so that was the third principle. And then the fourth principle that I do when I run the challenge is when people finish their continuous improvement work, their little mini project, I get them to do a bit of a mini pack and they showcase it to other people in the group. And we usually get some of the their boss and some senior leaders in. Um, we'll run a showcase that's maybe got three projects that do a bit of a they get 10 minutes to share their results and their improvements. Um, so we didn't have time because I only had an hour to do the whole experience. We didn't have time to do a proper showcase, but what I did was I asked um, each team what the difference was between their first measure and their last measure. And the team that had the highest number of catches, I did like a little mini interview just for two minutes um, what what did they do differently between their first attempt and their second? Um, any tips? Um, what was their score? And I also did the same for the team that was most improved. So the team who ended up winning this, um, two six I've got, was, was this trio here. Um, their first measure was one. They caught the ball once in 30 seconds. Um, the second time they did it after their improvement, they caught it 10 times. So they were actually the highest score and the most improved. And one of the reasons that they won, I did a little bit of a sneaky with them because the woman on the left, I've got a soft spot for her because everybody would written her off because they think she's not very good. But she did one of my yellow belt initiatives and she absolutely knocked it out of the park. She's brilliant. So while they started working together, they weren't, they didn't look like they were doing very well. And I, I came up behind them and whispered in the ear, if I was doing this, I would do some video analysis. So I would get Tim, who's the guy in the middle, to film you two doing it so you can see your technique and get some live feedback and change it up based on what you're doing. So what's interesting is um, the two women, they're frontline advisors in the people team. So in terms of hierarchy, they sit at the bottom. They're like customer service for our staff. The guy in the middle's the highest ranked guy in the room. Um, he's the people director. So he sits two down from our CEO and founder of the company. Um, but those, that little trio went from one catch to 10 catches um, and took, took one little hint about video analysis and applied it um, and improved their performance the best that they could. Uh, so they won the first round. Um, and then I just reran the same thing, but I just gave them a different task. So the second task that I picked was, <clears throat> Again, one person was the observer, but I asked them to switch roles. So everybody was an observer once. Um, in pairs, using one hand only each, they had 30 seconds to make a paper airplane using a sheet of paper. And then they had one attempt to fly it off. Um, we had a platform in the room, like a stage. So they all lined up and threw their paper airplanes across the room. Um, the furthest traveled one in the end. So. Um, they had a couple of minutes to try once. Um, we did that. The observer took their first measure in terms of where they stood, and where the paper airplane landed in terms of distance. Um, and then we just ran them through the same exercise again. So they'd done their pre-measure. They got five minutes to improve. Um, then we re-ran it. I asked the same bonus question again. Um, what other measures could you use in this instance? And there were things that came up in this session that I didn't plan that seemed like I planned it, but just came up in the, came out of, you know, what happens when you're in a live workshop. So for this one, one of the teams got, they basically got their paper airplane and scrunched it up into a ball and then gave it like a tip to make it look like the nose of a plane and two tiny wings and then they just chucked it. So 
they never ended up going with that design in the end. But once we'd done it, um, they didn't finish top. But once we'd worked through who'd thrown the furthest distance and stuff, I asked them to talk the group through what they were thinking. And they did a demo and it landed like maybe three quarters of the way up the room compared to probably in the top 20%. Um, it opened up a conversation about in terms of the measure that I gave, that might have been a good idea. But if that was a real plane with passengers and pilots, they would have probably died and it wouldn't have been a good experience. So when you're thinking about your solutions, you got to take a holistic view across who's involved in the process, who are your customers. It's not just about the KPIs. Um, so there was an opportunity based on what happened in the workshop and what people were doing for me to start challenging some thinking and assumptions about um, what people were doing. And just, there was a bit of banter as well, to be fair. So um, I ran that one again. I did have a fourth, I did have a third um, game, but I just, we were, we, we were actually well on time, but we were running behind because of someone ahead of me. So I just ran the two because I felt the, the atmosphere in the room was really good and that they all understood it and they were all having a good time. And rather than pushing it on and potentially starting to lag, I kind of finished it on a high. So we had a laugh for 40 minutes and then I just covered off the key principles again. Um, and Tim, that you saw the picture of there. So this, this is a couple of the... Um, this is one of the teams, that's their first practice. They were terrible, honestly. Um, and then this was them all lined up with the timer on the projector at the back. Um, and as I said, this was the head guy with Jackie and Wendy and, uh, oh, this was a, that's a wrong photo. This was something else we were doing earlier in the day with another group of people with um, transformation work that's top down. So this, pro this project was about bottom up, um, getting the frontline staff interested and engaged because we're gonna run another challenge round in January time when everyone's back, um, but also to get buy-in from the middle management layer um, because Tim really wants us to push it next year to really start to embed a culture of continuous improvement based on um, the work that I've done so far with them this year. So that, that set in a nutshell, um, I was going to give you my little um, tip for this one, other than what I've shared with you, is the games that I got were in this. Beat that. Um, so it's basically, you get, you get it off Amazon, it's like 20 quid. And... I should have shares in them, honestly. So there's like hundreds of these challenges with ping pong balls and uh, cups and toilet rolls and dice. And you get all the kit that you need in the box. Um, so there's, I think I got this pack and the extension. So there was 300 games or 250. And I basically went through the pack and picked out a handful that I thought would work really, really well. So I could, if I had a group of engineers, I would probably pick the aeroplane task or something like that. If I had a group of, like the people team are quite like out there, um, I'd do more of the ball stuff and stuff that was a bit more fun. Um, so there's a way if you get a kit like this, there's a way to be able to tailor the games to your audience. Because I know some roles are more serious than others and some cultures are more serious than others. Um, so there's a way that you can kind of tailor the workshop depending on who you've got in the audience and what their personalities and things are like as well. So, um, that's it in a nutshell, folks. Any questions or? Fantastic, Jenny. Um, your room management skills must be immense. How many people were there in the, in the class there? 
40. 40, yeah. I thought you mentioned 40. Um, that is a that is a big class to control. And you said you had to wolf whistle a couple yeah, of times. Yeah, no, I've not run one that big before in terms of interactive. I've obviously spoken at conferences yeah. and things where yeah. we've done Q and A, but yeah. this had to be interactive and I was taking a risk because I hadn't yeah. done something. I kind of took a bit of a punt and was like, I, th I feel like this is the right thing to do. Yeah. But it was risky because of the numbers and also because I had four layers of hierarchy. Yeah. And sometimes the more senior people feel they're above it. Yeah. Um, whereas with this, it worked really well. I just, the only thing I didn't expect was the level of noise yeah. and the need for me to get people's attention. The only way I could do it was wolf whistle. And that was just because I had nothing else. And I think when the first time I did it, they were all shocked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, you got, so you I, have a good whistle, Jenny. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I, do. <laughs> I, I use it with a dog when he's like halfway across a field chasing a pheasant. So um, I ended up, you'll see, I don't know if it's um, on the other pictures. You can see in the background <laughs> on this one here, there's a green, that's a stage. It's like a step. So I ended up standing like on the second step and will whistle. And some, of like, some of us might want to take a whistle, an actual whistle, like a referee's yeah, whistle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, it was a challenge. I'm not going to lie, but it kind of just added to the hilarity of the day, to be fair. Fantastic. And you can see like they're, they're got smiles on their faces. They're having fun. And um, we've got a record number of signups for the next round. Record, yeah. Um, could, could I ask you, um, when they engaged you for this session, was this a, um, a paid session or was this a taster to see if they wanted you for future work? That this was, so I was getting paid for this, but it was more a taster yeah. um, just to, I'd done some paid work with, a smaller group of people yeah. and then the director that was there was really keen to expand to give just raise a bit of awareness about the the good work that has been done and also basically that he wants everyone in the people team to be doing this stuff on a weekly basis on a regular basis um so it was a bit of an introduction and then it'll mean um you know, more paid work next yeah. year. And as I said, we've got, I actually have too many people signed up in Jan for our January round. There's too many people for me to be able to support. So I'm having to see if I can find somebody that will also like co-lead on the coaching and things like that to get more people through it. So well, yeah, it for, for it being a bit of a punt. Yeah. Um, it worked at best workshop I've ever run. Well, no. Jenny, to make a comment, um, thanks for the game, by the way, the ideas of the game. But, John, I think one of the things we need to do as a group, we all have various exercises that we use. You know, the one Jenny talked about with the paper plane, we do one, Jenny, for more for engineers, but it's a video and actually tells them how to make the plane. And from another piece of paper with an elastic band, we make a launcher to actually launch the plane. And it, 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 that really links into job element sheets and standardized operation because we make them very poor to begin with. So they all make all types of shapes. But then as they get on, you can get, you know, we've had over 500 meters on a plane, you know, outside. We took them outside. And I think, John, we did a CI workshop last week. And we do a bottle of water challenge with a two litre bottle of water. And it, it can get messy, but we then explain that water is a very important resource. And they, so they've got to empty the bottle. And I'm not going to go into the details of it, but then they have to fill it back up. But there's lines on the bottle. If they lose water, they get added time to the task. So it's all about we did a full CI workshop last week journey with a group that have got a bit of a task this year they've got 25 heads to take out in 2023 
So it's a bit more real, but it doesn't mean people are going to lose the jobs. It means people will be redeployed, but also some of the temporary labor will go. So we actually then watch the videos of the one process that they brought up time and time again. And they thought they couldn't get one head. By the time we finished, we reckon we could get two per shift. So 35,000 roughly, it's a 200,000 pound saving. And we're going down, I think it's the 30th of uh, January to actually take part in that workshop. So it's all about, for me, um, you've got to be, we, we do one called Taste of Lean, which is a four hour thing that touches CI, standardization, 5S and something else. But it's only four hours. And it, it just gives companies an insight into lean and whether they want to go down that path. I think we ne it needs to be more of it, John, particularly as the sharing of ideas. I mean, that box, I'll buy that box as soon as I finish this call, you know? Um, yeah. Simply, simple. Yeah, John, I've just been on it. It is $24.99 on Amazon and yeah. seems it's readily available. Yeah, yeah, John. I, I was going to say I've put in this chat, Jenny, but that's a brilliant idea. I'm I'm always looking for new ideas and new and innovative ideas. But I've got that game for the family. I've played it so many times, yeah. uh, and already I'm thinking about the the number of games that you could create. You know, especially around about you know Six Sigma and uh, process improvement there. Uh, it's, that's that's so uh, it's awesome. Uh, so yeah, definitely I'll be buying another. I think I'll be buying an extra couple of kits. And, and bringing that and and also just John on back of what you're doing yeah I've got I've got two I'm doing two taster sessions this month uh, kind of four uh, three four hour sessions um but yeah kind of looking at kind of ways of how I can make it a bit more fun uh, and interactive with those kind of games so I might kind of I might feed some of those in as well so no good job it's how you get that message over we've done one you know when you explain a histogram to white belt yellow belts they're a little bit where do we go we did one with pieces of wood that we've cut up, 45 pieces of wood, and they measure them and stack them, and they can see how the histogram's built. And the final challenge is to mix the wood and the quickest team to build the histogram. It just gets it over much easier. Yeah. So could I um, ask our um, new friends, Haprit or Ahmed, um, what you made of that, and if you think you could benefit from some of those ideas within your company or your work maybe uh, yeah ab absolutely i think jenny brilliant ideas on those games isn't it uh, and you mentioned about the paper plane i think that's something i've done it before uh, recently um because where i work in Vincanton, we're doing uh, introduction to ci for a company called screw fix which is a local diy um, and what we have designed is we have got nuts and bolt mix up so we're asking the guys to can you create this nut in five seconds in in the mix and i think that's something is we're doing to show 5s so it's like re reducing the number of repeaters of the nuts and bolts and extra washers as well so so that's another interactive game we we played and that went really well with the people as well it's quite fun um again lego i think i'm, I'm sure everybody has tried lego <laughs> there's a lot of stuff fun stuff we could do with lego but these games are really good what you mentioned about there it doesn't cost much isn't it it's very easy to do yeah. replicate anywhere and it creates a lot of uh, noise isn't it which is good gets everybody's attention mm -hmm. everybody wants to know what the noise is coming from that room they all want to know <laughs> what's going on in there isn't it yeah exactly i mean i i think um the probably the the beauty of the whole thing was it was so simple like the games were simple which which meant and the language was simple which meant what people remembered was the four key things that i said and that was it and one of them about cross-functional teams they didn't really need to remember that because they were all because they were living it with mixing up with other people um and you know, I saw those people talking to each other at the Christmas night out, which they probably wouldn't have done before the workshop because they probably wouldn't have spoken to Sunday and Data or FM or whatever. So really, I was only asking them to remember three things, measure, do your improvement and measure again. But they all come away. And whenever I ask them, whenever we've had a chat about improvement since, that's the things that they've learned that's the things they've remembered because the concepts were so simple um so i think that that was probably 
it was just so simple but so successful that's probably why Jenny, did you meant you didn't mention PDCA at all, but that could be expanded into a PDCA. Oh yeah, completely. Yeah, I, I just I, I only had an hour. I had a lot of people, and it was it was just before their Christmas night out. So I thought, just take an opportunity while the directors asked me to do a taster. But in an ideal world, you could tag this on to the front of a longer workshop, or you could do. It is a week one taster, and then if you're doing a follow up, you just do a reminder for a couple of minutes. Right, who can remember the four principles? Right now, let's go into one of the the, the tools, the Lean Six Sigma tools. Um, so in this session, the slides you saw were pretty much the slides I used. I just took out a couple of images that the company uses for their values. Other than that, everything you saw is what I use live. And Ahmed in, in Iraq, um, could you uh, comment on the benefits you could see from this at all? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy that I found the, the post on LinkedIn and joined you guys. So we do a lot of continuous improvement. I know it's more of a, an engineering process, safety related, but these type of, uh, I would say, sessions that will help understand the key elements like what Jenny just mentioned a few minutes ago that people will benefit from. So I'm really excited to, I will, I will try it. I will use the link that you shared in the chat and I will, I will, I will try it, yeah. Fantastic. Um, and we have uh, Saad join us uh, from Pakistan. Saad, hello, welcome. Hello, sir, how are you? Hello, sir. Well. Yes, we uh we just had we just heard from Jenny, I think. Um, but um, good 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 for you to just catch up with some of the comments, Sod. Yeah, all right. <laughs> He's probably in a in a busy room. Okay. Um, has anybody else got any comments, Chris? Yeah, I have a question for Jenny, if I may, please, Jenny. Uh, absolutely love those activities. Absolutely with you that I try to give fun activities in my classroom trainings. I haven't found activities so far, and thank you so much for ones that are really snappy that you can do in five or 10 minutes. Mm. The real difference with these. My question to you is, I still have clients who, because of their geographical distribution, are still looking for online training. Have you, have you happened across, have you used, have you heard of any activities once again that are highly interactive following the principles you've just described, but that work in an online environment using, you know, where people are basically like we are today on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but maybe that's something that we could co-collaborate to create. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, sorry, uh, I've used something called Mural and Miro. I don't know whether online collaboration tools, isn't it? So I think yeah. where I've played pizza making game uh, for Lean, so, so you have your basis of pizza, you add the toppings. I think you probably might have seen the paper version of that, but that's another really good collaborative um, uh, kind of like a place where anybody can join free. You don't have to sign up, but the person who is facilitating that workshop will need um, a license for that. And then people will join in and you can play interactive games as well on there. Um, so it's called, one is Mural, the other one is called Miro. Okay. And hard to on both on both of those as well. Um, they're they're free to have a license, you know, for you know for the facilitator. Uh, they don't cost. You can have a basic license for free. Yep. And yeah, they're, they're both good tools. Yeah, I think the basic version I think gives you one or two sheets you can use, yep. but I think on that you cannot you cannot have unlimited people coming and joining. So I think this got a bit of a. <laughs> great area to it but i think if you have the license i think it's not that expensive probably about five or ten quid a month uh and then you can have unlimited people joining in unlimited sheets as well you can have it in there so it's worth having that uh both of them either one of them brilliant brilliant tools yeah. i've used in covid uh running yellow belt courses on that yeah oh, it's good hey, Chris, uh, quick, Chris, because that, it's a question i've asked as well and and to, to answer your question, I'm still struggling myself. I'm currently running. Um, I'm currently running a series of um, online courses. Uh, the feedback I'm getting so far is good. 
Uh, everyone's loving it. Um, but, oh, it's painful. Uh, it's painful to do, you know, online uh, training. I don't enjoy it um, because it really is dry. I find it really dry. And the, and the exercises I've got, because I've done them about five times now, I'm really bored with them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've got nothing. I've got not. I've, I've, I've found nothing else. Um, but I'm just going. I'm just going on the basis that the the client's happy, feedback's good. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm still I'm still I'm still asking that question myself, Chris. Um, looking for interactive um games that we can do, you know, online. But I don't think there's many. John, um, maybe it's, um, maybe we could have a couple of sessions design design sessions at the conference. Yeah. We could have a little competition. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. workshop, see who can come up with the best online right. yeah. game, Lean Six Sigma yeah. game for training. Make it an agile competition where they get minutes to come up with a prototype, they demo it, and then they get 10 minutes to improve it. Make it <laughs> an agile I, I, kind I, of a... Yeah. I want to do something. I want to add something. Actually... Uh, Hi, sir. Yeah, hello, sir. Right now we are, uh, you can say that uh, we are... Uh, running a gamification series in Pakistan. So I'm also planning for the gamification or we can say simulation games, social game, uh, like you can say Ludo games on uh, related to Six Sigma statistics and all that. So we can introduce some simulation games, online games related to Six Sigma or continuous improvement uh, linked with the testing or uh, you can say teaching, like my suggestion is that. You, you have a, like a, in the classroom side, I believe you have a physical roulette table with a roulette with a ball. Yeah, and, yeah. And perhaps what you're suggesting is that we could potentially have a, a virtual roulette wheel that people take turns spinning. For, and getting... for, yeah, for chi-square test, like exactly, exactly. For the chi-square test, yeah, to, to see if there's a relation between the, the, the proportions of, of numbers, et cetera, yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that's the sort of thing. I, I think um, I haven't used uh, the Miro or Mural. Well, I've, I have been part of a class because um, Catherine, uh, Catherine uh, did, did one on using uh, Miro. But what I think might be the key is um, seeing people's faces, seeing people's interactions in this format rather than, you know, going to a, a whiteboard format where people book... Uh, I would really like to see it where I could almost pass something. To, so on my screen, I have Chris down in my bottom left. And I'd like to sort of interact with Chris down there where Chris puts his hand up. But yeah, put your um, left hand up, Chris, into that corner. And I put my hand, you know, and we're sort of <laughs> touching down there. You know, I'm going to pass Chris something, right? I'll throw this. It would be lovely if you could sort of do that, you know. Yeah, and it would be funny. Yeah. Um, Give it a try, John. Go on. <laughs> uh, hi, Jimmy. I know, I know you're a big fan. Jimmy Foster, um, a big fan yeah. of, of getting class interaction. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sat back and I'm listening, and, and that was going to be my closing statement, which is that the message that Jenny's getting across, and I think the general message is that we've got to make sure we have fun. So, um, you know, certain certain subjects or elements of what we teach and can be a little bit dry on occasion. And we've just got to have fun. And, you know, I use the acronym KISS all the time. Anybody tell me what that is? Keep yeah. it simple, stupid. Well, yeah, but you've got to be careful, John. So keep it simple and standardised or however you want to call the last S. Yeah, but it's, it's that, you know, it dep depending on who you work with, you ask that question. And, and for me, my... Uh, icebreaker is always about um, I split the, 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 the group into two whether I'm virtual or not and I'll talk about make me a cup of tea and I talk about right I want that part of the group to make me a cup of tea I want that part to make me a cup of coffee now they really don't hear what I've asked they'll make me a cup of now I'm now the customer and it seems that I'm taking the conversation of that process back all the time back to the beginning so regardless of whether I'm in day three, day four, wherever it might be, I'm taking it back to that simple process all the time. And it's something that people can get hold of and understand and, and the same enjoy it and like it as well. And like Jenny does as well, you know, it's, 
um, you, you generally pick up these throwaway statements or throwaway comments that you can go back to mm. uh, quite a bit and, and just keep everybody engaged all the time. Yeah. And also, particularly with virtual, if you um, start as you mean to go on and um, pardon the word, but if you pick on people, if you like, it keeps them engaged and keeps them on the toes all the time. You know, it's uh, so what do you think, John? John Rooney, what do you think, Dan? And so on, so on like that. So that's, that's the way I get around. But I'm with you there, Dan. It is hard work. It's hard work for the facilitator to uh, to try and keep them engaged. And also, I'm not technical enough to keep them on the screen all the time. So I generally, I don't know, it's the way I've got it set up, but if I go into presentation mode, I'll lose the people off the screen. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a blank screen. So <laughs> even if I've got two screens going on, yeah. um, it's it's um, it's the, it makes it even harder. So generally, I have it in the, the, the semi mode. So, yeah. Can I just uh, thank you very much, Jimmy? Brilliant. Can I just um, introduce um, Mohammed um, Al Said, who is in Egypt? Hello, oh, Mohammed. Have you got a camera there, Mohammed? Mohammed. Hello, Mr. Mohammed. Habibi, salam. <laughs> Oh, John. Multicultural. We're international. Yeah. Hello, Mohammed. Is Mohammed? What about we'd like to see Morphus while we, while we're waiting? Morphus, put your camera back on, please. Come on, Morphus. You have to wait and just stop the child screaming. Wait. Well, yeah. <laughs> nice. I thought Morphus was dealing with this. There's Morphus, yeah. Keep yeah. Yeah. The handsome, yeah. the handsome one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all crazy here and running behind the two boys. <laughs> well, nice. well nice for, people who, for people who don't know Morphus, for people who don't know Morphus, Morphus is, is very, very charismatic in the classroom. He always gets, um, yeah, you always get people engaged and um, it must be more exhausting for you than anybody because you put all your heart and soul into every training class morphus you feel washed out by the end um do you use humor a lot in your class morphus uh well uh, it is three things basically you need to make sure you know the content much better than what you plan to show and talk about uh so that you can deal with questions and then you have to complement with performance I mean, the, the, the trainings are part of a small show, the in-person trainings in particular. <clears throat> there's comedy, there's animation, because, I mean, if you are the only trainer and they are stuck in the room with you for four hours, maybe they will pay attention for 10 minutes. If you don't make them laugh, if you don't make them do something, if you don't engage them, then you lost them. And basically, they, they told us at the beginning, if I remember when I, was, when I did my training as a trainer, they said, if you want them to remember something, you need to create emotion. Laugh, pain, frustration, anything. <laughs> Even if you give them an exercise that they will suffer and they will get upset in a good way upset trying to solve the problem, they will never forget it. So that's why we try to use a lot of the emotions in the, in the trainings. Either something difficult that they can be frustrated or laughter in order to boost memory and to not to forget what, what they did. And I liked a lot listening to Jenny as much as possible. But also I was sad because I haven't been in a classroom since 2019. Everything is online. And I haven't been able to do any teaser because all about taking dry topics of training bells and trying to make it fun and exciting over the, over the internet. So I've heard a couple of comments about that. I can tell you what I have done is I just uh, take them through an, an example of uh, a friend of theirs having a restaurant that is doing poorly because they don't have returning customers, they don't have returning customers because people don't get a very good experience when they go to a romantic dinner, this being the, the theme of the restaurant. And then I just give them small exercises throughout, uh, throughout the throughout the training using this kind of case study. Sometimes time, time to try to make them humorous, sometimes <laughs> in a more serious mode. 
uh, in order to keep them focused and engaged because doing this kind of technical trainings uh, online, you can easily lose people. Uh, you can do a lot of fun and animation in, in person, uh, small comedy, but uh, online is a different beast that you have to manage. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank Just you. get a big bowl of chocolate, as I say. Uh, whatever works for you, chocolate <laughs> or some alcohol. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. But the go and do some stand up comedy while teaching people <laughs> uh, some serious stuff. No? Yeah. Um, yeah, Chris. Yeah, John. Uh, Jenny very kindly suggested a resource for us off Amazon. Wondering if anybody else has come across this book. And if anybody's had any experiences using this book? No experience. No, I'm not saying it, Chris. No, no, not really. Sorry, show the book again. Yeah, I, I use the precision delivery. I think I'll be using the precision delivery out of that, Chris. Uh, case study. I'm trying to find my book. Yeah, but it's good. It's, it's good. That's a good reference. Thank you, Chris. It's called the Big Book of Six Sigma Training Games. Yeah. Is that an Amazon thing, Chris? It is, yes. I've got yeah. my of Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'll put the link in the chat. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I make a quick comment about something, about this kind of um, uh, trainings? I want to see if it has been your experience where you go, uh, I think someone mentioned the Lego, and then they made a the comment that you know, everybody used Lego, but have you started finding yourself going to train people and uh, them coming back and saying, you know, enough with the helicopter exercises, which is similar to the, to the, to, to the airplane exercise, or Legos, or catapults, or... Because I found myself recently, especially when I'm asked to train people on, on higher boards, that they have more or less come across most of the trainings, most of the games, so then it becomes a bit more challenging to find a way to animate them in something completely different than what they have seen before. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful with repeating some of the games. <laughs> That's why Jenny's the ping pong game. Have you have you heard of that one before? Because that was new to me, ping, throwing ping pong balls over your shoulder. And one of, our, one of our suggestions, I think, is to collaborate to produce um, um, in a in a in one one portal perhaps all of our ideas for classroom games um, because I I think I invented one that hadn't been used before just the other week in uh, tossing pennies uh, from about three meters to a wall to try to hit a target on a meter strip and producing a uh, a uh, a data set out of that the position of the pennies things like that you know we could just take a couple of photographs and some basic instructions and have a a database of games and i, and I think i will take take that on to uh provide that portal um john can i can i do a follow-up question on the exam that you that you mentioned and maybe the, the rest of you can comment yeah. the challenge that i have with games yeah. and to an extent if i'm to be honest i have reduced them a lot all right. Because I'll tell you why. Because from one side, the companies are pushing to reduce the training hours because yeah. they don't want to commit people for a lot of hours in a classroom, either online or in person. Right. But the games do take you a lot of time. Okay. Because yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a fun way to learn if you have time to do it. But then for them to understand the game, do the game, play the game, debrief the game, the amount of time it takes when at the same time the client is trying to minimize the training hours, there are some times for me is an impossible equation to manage. And I don't know if you are encountered this challenge or not, because training hours keep reducing. Huh? I've seen some of the training hours you mentioned. How much time? In the past, we were spending four weeks for black belt training, maybe full 40 hours for yellow belt or for, for green belt, but you don't see this anymore. Like the times that people are, are, are devoting are almost half than what they were doing in the past. Yep. So I, I agree, especially for a certification class, I think your point to, to, get, yes, through yes. The, to get through the body of knowledge for certification yes. within one week 
you don't have a lot of time. So yeah, it's a luxury. Yeah, because the to thing have, is, yeah, a, yeah, the thing class, is that. Yeah. Sorry, it's well, sorry? it's a luxury to have a class where there's no expectation for a certification in a way. So if you're doing just a class on CI or mm. a, uh, the the one I did was on SPC, statistical process control, and there was there was no expectation of a a body of knowledge. So yeah. We, we have to dis di differentiate, I think, between these more um, open-ended classes that we're allowed to take and those that require you to get through a certain amount of uh, all, all the different topics that comprise a green belt or, or yeah. a yellow belt. Yeah, because I remember now, I had the Aileen class that they were not necessarily a certification coming later. I brought them a cata belt. We do process mapping. We did the uh, uh, root cause analysis, a fish pond, five Ys. But there was there was a luxury of time yeah. when you have this kind of, of 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 setup to spend more time on the game. Right. Uh, right. So when we talk about good practices, maybe we need to distinguish good practices where, as you said, you have maybe a teaser or you have maybe two days where you try to pass some to, to teach some concepts, basically. And then different type of games or ideas when you have a certification class, because those you are very, very tight on time. And uh, the luxury of uh, is, is not there mm. for some of the games. But more of us, I think Chris said it before, it's having games in the bag that you can switch. You know, when people have been on a course for a number of hours, they do start to go down a bit. And not necessarily just getting a principle, it's just to get them up off their feet, do something for 15 minutes. Yeah, and then let them sit back. It just energizes them again. It, it's not necessarily to get a principle over that one. Jenny's just said, but the ping pong ball, you could probably do that in less than fifteen minutes. You know, in stages. But it, it's it's sometimes, and we have the advantage because both Roddy and I work together. One of us will be watching the group, and if you see the heads going down, he'll click his fingers and he'll pull a game out the bag just for that fifteen minutes. If it's a principle based grace if it isn't just to get them moving we do one a very simple one called masters and servants that have got across a fictitious river however the servants can't uh, sorry the masters can't be outnumbered by the servants i won't tell you anymore it's fun it gets them going it gets some thinking it gets a flip chart going it just gets some thinking outside the box and it's I don't know, 20 minutes, you know? Well, Simple as that. I, I get this, energizers, I get them in a classroom. We have plenty of those. But yeah, okay. I'm thinking, I'm online. thinking now, even, yeah? yeah? If you do it online, if you do it online, uh, have you tried to play these things online? No, Morphus, no. That, that, it, it's, I think we've gone back to the point, I haven't done online for over a year and a half now. We do everything at source. Online, and I think we said it again, it's, it's, how do you engage people? How do you get them engaged? Because they're sitting in their own room. Uh, I haven't got the answers to that, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to, um, for, the, for the benefit of those that have to leave at, 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 uh, right now, at the, the one hour point, um, yes, I'm going to um, just sum up very briefly and thank everyone for attending. Um, I think the word that um, resonated the most with me was emotion. I think the fact that um, these games bring emotion into the classroom and Morpheus said with emotion, it, 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 it makes memory. And um, Jenny also uh, was, was uh, pointing to that fact. Um, so I think this is what we're missing in the online training and we have to try to bring more emotion into online training. Um, uh, you know, just the fact you have your camera on gives more emotion. Um, the small, small incremental steps you can take to bring more emotion into online training. But in the classroom, definitely the point Chris makes sometimes and John, you have to just have a, sh a short exercise for energizing the class, for getting them up and doing something uh, getting the, the oxygen to the brain um, and <clears throat> it might it might not have to take so long but it's just something to get them moving correct um, we've all got great ideas Saad in Pakistan's been doing a lot of gamification and John Rooney does Chris does Jimmy does we all and and I think what as, as a as a takeaway from this um, I will um, 
make it a point that ILSSI will facilitate some sort of collecting of game ideas. You never know. I mean, Chris, I, I do have that book, and it's the sort of thing we could even put an ILSSI book together, right, of, of games. Um, so uh, anybody can stay on. I, I have more minutes to stay on, but um, I just want to officially thank Jenny Davis very much for <laughs> her, her time. Um, and give it, give Jenny a round of applause, please. Thank you. Great discussion as well. Highly enjoyed it. And what, what will you be coming to Bucharest, Jenny? Yes, I just yes. got to get back with my my arrival dates and stuff. Yes. So, so we, yes, I'll be uh, I'll be there with you all next year in person. Yes. So we're having a conference in March in Bucharest. Anybody that isn't aware. Um, and you, you're very welcome. Saad is going to try to be there from Pakistan, even. Okay. Aren't you, Saad? Yes, sir, exactly. I'm also coming. Good, good, good. Could you share the details, John, please? Absolutely, Aprit. Yes, absolutely. Um, um, special thanks to John for setting this up. John, really appreciate okay. seeing everybody again. It's been yeah. too long. Great, great to see you. We'll Good do. See you, Jenny. We'll, we'll do more like this. As I say, anybody that's, we'll, we'll officially close now so that people don't feel it's um, impolite to leave. So please, uh, thank you for attending and stay, stay with the community and, and keep up with things. So I'm very happy Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. Uh, uh, Bye -bye. I'll, I'll, stay on. I'll stay on for a few minutes in case, if anybody wants to chat. So if anybody's got any questions for me thank or, you, or anything. Yeah, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, uh, Ahmed. Thank you, Chris, Chris Latham. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Asad. John Rooney. Take care, John. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you, Morpheus. You, all the best. Thank you, John. Have a Thank good you. one. Have a good one. Morpheus. Yeah. Merry Christmas, all. Merry Christmas, Chris. Recover soon. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you feel better. Yeah. The, See you in Bucharest. Thank, thanks to Jenny as well, mate. You think you'll be able to get, get there, Chris? Yeah, I know where it is as well, mate. So <laughs> I might. I might also have some other business out there at the same time. So, oh, brilliant! Uh, if you want a little case study, I'm not promising anything because yeah. I might not be able to share it. But yeah, uh, it's okay. an interesting place. Yeah. Well, Chris, you you'll be there. Saad's going to be there. Jimmy Foster's going to be there. Chris is going to be there. I'm going to be there. Jenny's going to be there. Dan, I don't know whether you're going to be able to make it. I know you made it to Cambridge last year. <laughs> Uh, not not sure right now, John, but I'd love to get out of there, but it'll be depending on client work. Right now, it's looking like client work might take priority. Sorry. Oh, right. right. Uh, I'll, the, I'll know nearer the time. Yeah. I'll, I, it, it's quite simple. The, the instructions actually are pre um, ILSSI.org, and in the conference menu item, you'll see the... Uh, so, um, ILSSI.org, and then the conference menu item, you'll see Bucharest. Link in the chat, John. Yeah, I think I got the link. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Hapreet, how can we, uh, you know, um, uh, involve you more? Uh, in, in, uh, well, how can we uh, engage you more? You you are a, um, a trainer and consultant, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit of both, yeah, over the years. Yeah. yeah. So in the last, uh, last role, when I did... Um, ASOS, the clothing company. So I did uh, quite a lot of online training uh, during COVID. And like I was saying, uh, I was doing yellow belt training, uh, but that was through LCS rather than uh, ILS. Sorry. Yeah, LCS. Um, so we did some training and I think um, most of the training I had 10 to 15 people online, but it was highly interactive because I was always asking surveys or questions on the chat box. I want everybody's response on this. It could be something simple like, uh, does anybody know about lean principles? Have you heard of lean principles? How many are there? Three, four, five, you know, can you, can you guess them? And I think these kind of uh, notation, I mean, these kind of uh, checks every like 10, 15 minutes is really, really good. And then most of the training I didn't do on PowerPoint. I did it on Mural and Myra. So you go on the interactive dashboard uh, and what you're doing is you're just playing some games and using post-it <clears throat> notes. Right, uh, right. So when you're asking questions and you're explaining something, you're moving post-it notes around. And then you also, what you do is when you're doing any exercise, I tend to split people into different rooms as well. So you are a room of three or four people. And then what it forces people to collaborate forces people to 
input something or say something. And what I used to say is, if you're listening to me on presentation, you don't have to have your cameras on. But when you go into your breakout rooms, which I used to do every 45 minutes, go into the breakout room so you can see each other, talk to each other. And then that makes people just to do things and activities, especially when it's something to do with posted notes. As in, you have to write something on a note or move the note around to different buckets and boxes. Uh, so that's something I've used. <laughs> and uh, I think Morphe is talking about humor as well. That's uh, definitely always there. But just uh, just be careful. You're not taking the piss out of anyone, but you're taking jokes on yourself. So I always tend to joke about me or my day job or what things I do and how kind of obsessed with leans in it. I think we all talk about some of the personal examples, isn't it? Like using a dishwasher in a lean way or having a kitchen in a lean way or having, you know, tea and coffee in the right area, isn't it? And I think always you kind of joke around it. It's never there in the right place whenever you need it, especially when you're living with kids and young kids, which uh, never leave things in the right place. I think these kind of jokes uh, just to keep it interactive, isn't it? Very Can I ask you something about what, yeah. you, what you just said? Well, first of all, you don't insult them from the, from the first session. You wait for the second one to insult them. First one, <laughs> you give them a free pass. Uh, How did you get to know them? <laughs> yeah, you just wait for the second date. Uh, especially if you if you stay with them 10 sessions, that I do, by the end of the 10th session, I even know the credit card number. Now, um, I want to ask you about splitting them in rooms, okay? Because when you split them, your experience, when you split them in a physical room, it's easy for them to follow who is lost and who is working and who is not. Assuming you are a single trainer alone, if you yep. split them into four rooms, let's say, do you then hip hop per room and try yep. to figure out uh, who is lost or not? Because I tried a couple of times and it was <laughs> so frustrating because not being able to, to see who is lost and who is not became like a carousel. I would keep hopping, uh, trying, you, you know, this kind of, uh, when you go, in the circles, and you see someone spinning plates. And, and while you fix one plate, the other one is going to fall. And you have to run, go to the other room yeah. and try to put them back on track. Yeah. Uh, what has been your experience in having in virtual rooms? Has it been running smooth? Or you find yourself like the setup that I said, running around trying to make sure the plates don't fall down? Yeah, I, th I think first thing what I do is I give one person the ownership in that room. So one person is responsible to manage the time and present back feedback. So it's mm -hmm. always somebody before you split the room and you say in in, in room A, uh, John, room B, uh, Ben, I want you to feedback everyone and make sure you keep people on track. <laughs> and when I'm saying uh, I do hop, but I don't need to hop so much because I'm using mural so I can see what every room is doing in one sheet. So he's in okay. front of my screen so I can see room one is moving sheets around, room two is doing something, but room three is really quiet. It looks like something they need help. So I'll have to mm -hmm. jump in that room only to explain if they're struggling. Okay, okay, good to, point. To reinforce good that, point. Harpreet, to reinforce that, I would suggest that you, you can, on Zoom, you can press the button and jiggle and put the, you know, a, a varied people in the room. However, you can be selective. And in your, your initial... Um, first hour or so before you um, you put people in rooms, you're going to get a, a feeling of who's grasped the topic. Therefore, they might be the leader that you're talking about, Harvey, you, you know? So you, you've got some sort of confidence that they're leading the room. I, I think first what I do is I, the first activity I normally do is introduce yourself. What do you know about lean on scale one to 10? So when people are doing that, then I can see who is quite expert, who knows a bit about lean, uh, what kind of job role they do. So who's the people? So I start to shape that up. And then when I do the randomization of the rooms, then I know this person, there's too many experts in this room. So I need to move one person to the other person. So before I go on like a comfort break. So in the break, I'll just do those people moving around mm. after the introduction. Good yeah. Idea, yeah, and I've used uh, Teams. I've never used Zoom, so I'm not sure <laughs> what function. But Teams is absolutely brilliant about jumping rooms and moving things around. I found it very oh, yeah. much easier. Thank you, Dan. Guys, I need to run. I was just I was going to say, for me, I keep my exercises to ten, 10 minutes. I do yeah. I do a jump between the rooms, but uh, I open my rooms up for ten minutes at a time, and I give them the instructions. You put ten minutes, and they were all coming back together. And I've got the rooms auto set where everyone comes back together at ten minutes. And likewise, I have a I, I want to have a spokesperson coming back, so I say, you know, when you come back, I want to have one person who can speak on behalf of that group. Uh, but yeah, ten minutes for me, and then 
So if they are lost, you know, they're not lost for that long. Absolutely. And, 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 and that's worked for me. Guys, I need to run. I've got a ferry to jump onto, but it's always really good seeing you all and we'll hopefully catch up uh, soon. Have a fantastic uh, festive break and all the best of the new year, guys. Brilliant. And we'll catch Brilliant. up. Jimmy, let's catch up in the new year. Happy hog money. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you very much. Cheers, guys. Take care now. Yeah. Bye. Cheers, Dan. Yeah. The other thing I'll suggest, Moff, is if somebody is lost, it may be that we need to recap on the subject that you're talking about. <clears throat> Well, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember last time we used the rooms, we gave them the task, we gave them an Excel file to put some numbers, do some analysis. It's just my point is, in, and again, I haven't been in a classroom since 2019. In a classroom, we could have 20, 25 people, but you have two trainers, so you spot problems easily. Uh, whether someone is progressing or not, because you also split, we're splitting the work between ourselves. The last time I used the rooms, uh, you could spot misunderstandings of uh, of uh, how misunderstandings regarding the task that they were given, yeah, yeah. or maybe you are going to spot a problem, so then or a mistake they made, so they give them feedback and have to do it again. It's just it is always takes these activities take much longer time when I try to do them online versus the real life in a classroom. And I guess it goes back to the problem of time management, where I struggle a lot. And, and, and I reached the point that I don't do, uh, I don't split them into classes. I keep small groups. I do a lot of in-house trainings with companies. Six to eight people. I don't get more people in, 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 a, in, a live, in, a, in an online class. Six, maximum eight. So then what I do with these six or seven people most of the times come, I give them challenges to interpret some things and discuss some things together, but everybody stays in one room <laughs> and I'm able to follow a little bit better what is happening. So, so I don't have large groups anymore uh, in life in order to over in, in, in the online, in order to overcome some of the difficulties I had regarding time and coordination and aligning a little bit or, or spotting quickly some mistakes they were making. Um, so I try to reduce a lot the size of the online classes. How many people do you normally put in an online class? I've had maximum 15, to be honest, 10 to 15. 15, okay. No, 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 no. I Max cap that I have is eight, not only because uh, I've done, last time I did with 15, uh, getting questions from each one of them uh, coming from different companies in particular, if it's like a public, uh, if it was a public class, again, it was a struggle with time. So my online classes, I've capped them to eight, I don't do more than eight, and uh, I do 12 to 15 if it is uh, in a classroom. Uh, I go 12 to 15 in a classroom, but I don't do it online. I do it max eight people. I think it's just what, you, what you're comfortable with, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is what works better for uh, each one of us with their own technique and their own uh, yeah. maybe clientele or uh, expectations from the client. So... But Morphus, it sounds like you're getting forced down the route of cutting the the, the learning hours down as well by your clients. That sounds like it's the problem. Well, let's say let's say that uh, sometimes it's, it's challenged by the client. Sometimes, if I find room, I will do it myself. If it is, I give. I tell you, if it's a yellow belt class, we do full week. We used to do full week because they go for a certification. They used to go for a certification body that has twice or three times the body of knowledge for yellow belt that we have with Alice Sai. Okay. You, yeah. So yeah, you explained it, it was when IASSC. You, yeah, the ISSC. You, you, it had to be a full week for a yellow belt. It, it had to be full week. Now, the full week online, I've done it 10 weekly sessions, two and a half hours each. And I supplement it with a learning management, with an LMS that I have, where there are exercises for them to go and do a process map and send it to me to give feedback. There are revision quizzes. So, what I've done. I've reduced from 40 hours to 25 hours, but by reducing that, I give them homework to do on which I give them feedback. So total time for them, it is around 40 hours. If I see the study they do and the exercise they do, but for me, it's not 40 hours commitment, it's less. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and so I'm trying to reduce my time 
through LMS and weekly sessions and self-study and exercises they do, but they more or less spend the same amount of time themselves in study. Yeah, so, so the yellow belts, when I did, it was six modules, uh, again, breaking down to the make cycle. So um, module one for introduction to lean, and then you go into the MAIC, uh, the six modules, and they were not more than three hours long each day, but we did it across um, four, uh, four week periods. So, so yeah, week yeah. one, week two, so like that, that's how we split it rather than doing in in a week's time. And I think that's a quite a lot to take in. And then what we expected people to do is a live project. So before you sign up, you should have a small project in mind. You want to do part of this to make cycle. So it has to be something which is going to run for a month. Yeah. And, and, and actually it's interesting what you say, because the market, how it works where I am, they switched from the full week uh, in person. They switched to 10 consecutive days, weekdays, okay, three hours per day. Yep. So they were doing three hours on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then I, when I, this was through some educational uh, organizations I partnered in Greece. But then when I went on my own and I talked to the companies and HR, the people who were trained, they pushed back a lot because when you do day, daily trainings, uh, you lose them very fast. There's a certain capacity that the brain can absorb. And second week, they are on holiday mode. They don't pay attention to what happens. They're already tired. So what I've done is, at least with my corporate clients, I've negotiated and they accept it, that we need to spread it into, let's say, 10 weeks for green bells, 12, no, 10 weeks for yellow bells, 12, 12 weeks for green bells, and 15 weeks for black bells, in order for me, if they don't have projects, because again, most of them don't have projects, which is frustrating. They come to black belt training when they have been certified as yellow bells and green bells, and some of them have not even done a project. So at least, I give them exercises and I say, now go and do a value stream. Okay, one week to do a value stream. Up. You have one week to do root cause analysis and send it to me. I'll have a quick look and give you some feedback. So I'm trying to give them these practical exercises to compensate for the fact that they don't have a project. And I'm spreading it over a period of time because forcing them to do revisions over this period of 10 weeks, hopefully more things will stick in their minds. Uh, throughout the training. And at the, at the time being, my corporate clients in Greece have accepted this model of working, which I'm the only one who's doing it in the market. And I've done, I've, I've got some very big clients through this kind of modular weekly approach because, and I will stop, not talk much, because they just started to realize when they sent people to do executive trainings online to, to, to Cambridge or Oxford, mm -hmm. this is how they structure them. They structure them through weekly uh, modules. So companies maybe two years ago have rejected completely my proposal, but because they were forced to do online executive programs that they have this kind of, of schedule over eight or 10 weeks, they have become more open to my proposal. And now all my programs go this way. We had a similar experience at Renault Lit, uh, Jimmy, with uh, them want, wanting to spread out green belts over several weeks one day one day a week two days a week. Well, actually, yeah. one day one day a, a month something like that. Uh, and i think the challenge for a trainer then is how do you schedule your time so you can still um get the revenue required because you you are blocking out 10 weeks for one client um potentially you're not going to be able to then deal with other clients um, because you you need that time to visit the client, and you, your week your week is shot because you have to be be there uh, for for one or two days, right? So I, th I think I think we we built up the model initially maybe to suit the training company more, right? That's why they want a training company wanted to do it in five days consecutive because it was better for the training company not necessarily better for the, the trainee. John, just, just to comment on what you said, this spread that I mentioned, yeah. I don't offer it for, I do not offer it for in-person trainings. I only offer it for online. Because if you do it online, you, can, you don't have these logistics problems that you mentioned, okay? Yeah, right. When a yeah. client came and said, I want in-person, okay? What I told him in order, what we did in order to match their budget, what we did, we did, uh, and I'm going in Greece because of that, we do Thursday, Friday, 
Thursday, Friday. So uh, two days per week, because then I can do it in person. I fly Wednesday evening, I return on Saturday. I charge a premium because he understands for logistics, but there is no way you can, you can make it viable to no. spread it if it is in person, you go bankrupt. It, okay. it, it cannot happen. <laughs> only, only for online, only for online is, is working. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, we run seven, seven trainings in parallel. Two trainings per day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and one, one class on Monday. And this run for four months, like that. The last four months. Seven, of, but, sorry, seven different clients in parallel. Well, no, one client, for one client, I was running in parallel a yellow belt, a green belt, and a black belt, for yeah. example. Yeah. But, but when you do it online, we have done, we reached, I don't think it's smart to do more than seven, and seven, I brought a second trainer to help. Yeah. But the last four months of 2022, this year, yep. we were running seven online classes in parallel, sp spreading things over one, one, one session per week per class. Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 we had a little bit uh, of luck in the northeast to some extent that we found two clients, myself and Jimmy, that were within one hour's driving distance. And if you could, if you have the luxury of that, again, you can do the the one or two days. Um, <laughs> but then, um, you know, anything further than that, yeah, it's too tiring to to do more than two do two different clients in a week. And yeah, and this is how I switch them from in person to, uh, to, to online because I give them a price where I'm charging the lost time for traveling. Yeah. So they say it's too expensive. I say, yeah, I don't make any money to travel. So uh, you have to find somebody else. I don't know if you want me, you have to pay the day I travel or we do it online, it's much cheaper for you. Yeah. And 90% have gone online. 90% of my clients have gone, have gone online. Right. Um, good. Well, I, I, yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Uh, Chris. I want to say thank you to Harpreet for, uh, for joining us and being so open with his experiences. Thank you, Harpreet. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, actually. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I certainly hope you can... Is there, is there some sort of newsletter, John, that we send out? We can maybe add Harpreet to, 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 to yeah. that newsletter mailing list. Yeah. I, I think the newsletter was just sent out uh, today, actually, for partners or yesterday. Yeah. Did, did you? Yeah. I, I actually wasn't sure whether I was actually on the mailing list. So uh, Julianne might have missed me off the mailing list. Um, did you get that, Jimmy? I'm going to check. Now you've uh, written it down. I'll have a look. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. check. Just just do search for the word newsletter. Um, but will, yeah. yeah. Uh, we will have to put you uh, on a on a mailing list if you if you don't mind just for keeping Please. you up on events and things like this. And one takeaway from this is something I would like to sign up for uh, ILSSI to, as I say, produce um, a section on the website um, which will be accessible for um, game ideas. And um, I have two or three that I use on a regular basis, but I, I loved Jenny's ping pong game. I can definitely say, see me using that. Um, the pa paper airplane, I think that falls under your category morphous of something that maybe they, they've seen before, but um, yeah. the ping, yeah. ping pong, I love the ping pong game. They don't want to hear about Lego, helicopters, uh, catapults. No, catapults, yeah, catapults, although, Catapults, we have better success with these because they've used catapults only for DOE. So when you use a catapult for MSA or for a fishbowl, you still have some room to use it. Huh? But most of the classical games are uh, not workable anymore. Well, I use the catapult, but I like to use fluffy, fluffy balls, right? And, and uh, black sticky paper. So you produce a very nice pattern because the fluffy balls with their colors land on the black sticky back paper. Uh, and so that's my twist on the catapult game. Yeah. By the way, how we introduce, if, if you want to make it more fun and exciting, how you introduce, I don't know if you're doing it, more fun and laughter with the catapult game is um, uh, you role play, your role play and you play sometimes the king or the general 
or the operator of the catapel and uh, you harass, advise, obstruct, give extra information to the teams. Mm, yeah, put people in different roles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, yeah. We've done this like yeah. uh, how you get a spec. Who do you interview? The king, the general, the operator, and then you have more opportunity to add an extra flavor to the to the, to the exercise. When mm, you do yeah, I like it. Talking talk about uh, motions as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah right. Yes, Chris, I'm going to have to go as well. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yes. yes. Merry Christmas. Thanks for participating. It's yes. all about it. Thank you. Bucharest. Bucharest. Hasta Bucharest. All right, guys. Thank you. Have Stay a good Christmas everyone. and Happy right, New Year. Thanks, now. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. So thanks very much, everybody. All right. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye, Harvey. Bye-bye. Bye, Morse.